Welcome to another GridDB quick start video. This video will be focused on using Java in conjunction with your GridDB cluster. So we put together a small bit of code that we will walk through together in a bit here that will just show you, you know, the very basics. So connecting to your cluster, running a query and inserting. So let's take a look here. So this first bit is just, you know, standard boilerplate. Um, just import statements that we need to have here to allow us to connect and use GridDB. Um, for this next portion here, we're actually defining our schema. So each one of these classes represents a different container in our cluster. So each one is actually of a different type. So in GridDB, as you probably know, there are two different types of containers. So there's the collection container and there's a time series container. So the collection, the, what differentiates them is the collection container is more of a standard SQL table, if you want to think of it that way. So the row key can be a string or a float or an int, whatever you like. And then the time series container actually takes time data as the row key. So here we're using the Java date object as our row key here. Okay, so for this next portion, um, we are actually going to insert our values that we actually use to connect to our cluster. So here we're using, you know, just the default values, you know, just as an example. Here we use those properties to actually connect to our cluster. And then this next part is um, running a query. So um, querying with GridDB is fairly similar to querying with JDBC. So first you open up one of your containers and then you run the query and you fetch the results. So here you can see the query actually looks a lot like SQL, but this is actually using GridDB's TQL. So it's kind of nice. It's pretty familiar already. This next part is actually iterating through all of our results here. So the neat thing about using GridDB and using the class definitions to define our schema is that you can instantiate an instance of your schema class by fetching the rows. So here, as we iterate through all of the results, we are each of the result is being placed into a person class. So it really makes your code very organized and easy to, to write. And then so to actually insert into your container here, you just um, instantiate the class and then set the variables within the instance and then you just write it to the container. So for example, here we want to write to our time series container. So the row key will be, as we said, the, the Java date object. So it'll be the current time. And then these other values are just um, generic values for the rest of the columns to fill it out. And then we just um, use the put here. So we put that into our container. And then for this code, we're um, setting the auto commit to false and then manually committing here. So you don't have to run like this, but just wanted to show you what it looks like. Well, we do recommend you run like this actually, but you don't have to. And then this last bit is just closing the connection, of course, just so we avoid any sorts of memory leaks. And then to actually run here, so first you'll need to add the grid store jar to your class path so that the compiler can actually find and use GridDB's classes like so. And then the rest is just standard Java stuff. So you compile with the Java C command like so, and then you run the program like so, just running with Java like that, like any other Java program. So we hope that was helpful and happy developing.